Today is the 2nd of August 2008 mm -hmm. and we're here at Hoppets mm -hmm. in Fordham mm -hmm. talking to Harry Parrott. Mm -hmm. So Harry, could you tell me your full name? Harold Edward Parrott. And where um, were you born and when? I was born in Rillsbury Cottage Stadway in 1917. 13th of October 1917, my grandmother's place. In I'm, Stanway, yes. Yeah, I'm number two. Number two son. Yeah, yeah. My father was in the army at the time, you know, the 1914-18 yeah. war. So, were you born actually in the cottage? Or, yeah. or in a hotel hospital? So far as I know. Mm. Uh, I wasn't really conscious. So far as I know, I, I was born there. Uh, you know, yeah. most people were. I never questioned it. Never thought of it. I'm sure, though. Yes. So, what was the name of your? Were the name of names of your parents? My mother was Katie Alice. My father was Claude Harold. Where I got the Harold from? <laughs> yes. Okay, and Parrot, P A double R A double T. A double T, yes. Okay, and what was Katie Alice's maiden name? Nice, and no, nice, N I C E. N I C E. Mm. Stanway family, lots of them there. So, you said, and that it was grandmother's house, was it? That's right. Yeah. Whilst my father was in the army during well, the war. So that's Rosebury Cottage. And you were the second, so uh, who was the eldest? Bob. Uh, and they called him Cyril Claude, but we had to call him Bob. All right. Okay. Yeah. So Bob came first. Yes. Then came Harry. Yes. Were well, you known as Harry? Did your Not parents... Not until I went to school. All oh, right. Well, then... Uh... Mm. And the third? The third, Frederick Sidney. Frederick Sidney. Yes. And the fourth? Leslie Arthur. Leslie, and the fifth? Claude Ronald. Claude Ronald. No, no sisters, all... No, all the five parrot boys, we're famous. All right, and where, where were they all born? Uh, the rest, uh, the rest... I'm not quite sure whether Fred was born in Stanway or Maidenborough Street. I wasn't old enough to know. No. I'm, I'm four years older than I think he must be born in... Uh, two and a half years older than him. I think he must have been born in Maidenborough Street. Right. So, um, what's the connection with Maidenborough Street then? Is that where the family lived? Ah, uh, that when my father came out of the army, and of course he had to find a house of his own, because my mother had lots of brothers and sisters. So right. we, uh, he got this house in Maidenborough Street. So what number was that? 66. You know? Um, Just below St Helen's Lane, on the left-hand side. As you go down? Yes, yes, up two steps. Yes, I know. So you probably had a pub quite near, there was a few pubs around that one. Oh yes, there? yes indeed too. <coughs> so that's near the chapel as well, the St Helen's Chapel? No, there's not a chap. Uh, what's used now, what is that called? There's a chapel, or there was a chapel in St Helen's Lane, That's it, yeah. but that was a non-conform, so I, used yeah, yeah. To, I know of that. That's right the other end. Yes, the Stockwell. East Stockwell Street yes, side, yes. The, the Stockwell Chapel. I don't know anything about it now. Um, so, where are you living at the moment? You're, you're living Fordham at the moment? At the moment, yes. In um, Ponders Five Road? Five Herrings Way. All right, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, well, what what typically would be your earliest memories then? How far do you go back? Well, only to the time really that I can remember when I first went to school. That is in Stockwell Street, Infants. Yeah. And, and I went with my brother. They held him back to go with me. He was a little bit subject to mm. various problems. Mm. And I remember I cried in school because they separated us. He <laughs> went to a, into bigger class. That's Leslie, is it? No, uh, Bob. Oh, uh, yeah. Bob, oh, that's Cyril Claude. Yes. He was called Bob. We always called him Bob. Cyril Claude, yes, that's right. Bob. Yes, yes. 
He was Bob, always has been Bob. You can't go to school, Cyril Claude. No, well, probably no. not. Cyril Claude Parrot, quite a mouthful. Um, so, earliest memories at school, do you remember the teachers? Or... There was a Miss, Rolf was the head mistress, and there was a Miss Halls. Yes, she yeah. was at that school. Is the school still there? Is the building still there? I haven't been there for years. No, yeah. you ought to go and, and have a look. No. Pardon? You want to go and have a look and see if it's still there? I, I can only walk a few. I'll though. put you on the motorbike and get you up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you see, when I was eight, uh, went to um, uh, the Bluecoat School mm. in St Helens Lane. Oh, right, yes. And well, mm. that's still there. Yes, The indeed, building is yes, still... Yes, so yes. it was separated into boys and girls, I think. It was then. We yeah. had separate playgrounds and mm. there's a big petition between mm. us. You couldn't mix with no, girls. No, you couldn't get up to any, any yeah. monkey business or anything. No, thank good gracious. No. So it was a uniform you had to wear? No, no. The, the girls, or a certain number, say four or six, had these uniforms. You've seen the picture, mm. like domestic servants, mm. with the tucked arms and the apron and that kind of thing. Mm. They stopped the boyers, but four boyers every year were given a grey suit, mm. which they had to go to Page in Longwall Street to have it and buy. Bob had it, mm. but as I left that school at 13 to go to Parsons Hee School, I never got a free suit. Mm. Okay, so at 13 you went to Parsons Heath, so why did you go there? Did the family move? Well, ah, yes, we moved to Goring Road. The council house, of, you see in Maidenborough Street, there was two down and two up, and there were four of us in one small bedroom. Yes. Yeah, so Goring Road must have been quite a new development. It was quite a thing, then. and it was one of the first, um, the first um, houses built in Goring mm. Road. So that, I, yes, oh, 1930 then, that's quite... Yeah, there, then uh, uh, I went to Parsley School, teacher's favourite, became head of the school, <laughs> yeah, captain of the football team. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So what was your best subjects, what did you excel at? All, all of them, I was good at all of them. Um, English, mm. arithmetic, geography, mm. history, well, I was, well, if I got eight out of ten, I was disappointed. Mm. I was mm. always good at that. Mm. Before that, before we knew, we were all in St Nicholas Choir. Mm. Do you know St Nicholas Church? Oh yes, well, it's gone yeah. now of course. Yeah. But... And we were all in um, uh, the St Nicholas Cup Pack too. Mm. And I was senior sixer. Mm. Again, because I was the cutmaster's favourite, <laughs> and I didn't know how to do the knots. Mm. Quite a problem. <laughs> what was the cup mistress's name? Any idea? Miss Denham. Well, they were joint. It's rather odd, mm. really. There was a Miss Denham and a Miss Trippick, who was the daughter of um, of, of a curate. It's yeah, the Reverend, the Reverend, Reverend Curate. Oh yeah. yes, yes, and. Bob, uh, Bob was made senior six and before me because older, mm. but he had to share it with another mm. man because Miss Tropical wanted one boy mm. and Miss Denham mm. wanted the other. Mm. So at that time there mm. were two senior sixes. Mm. But when Bob left, I became senior six, mm. the mantle of Elijah onto Elijah, whatever. <laughs> yes. So that was that was Cubs, known as Cubs, was it? Pardon? Cubs, Cubs. Yeah. Wolf Cubs, yes. Yeah, Wolf yeah. Cub, yeah. And I carried the flag to church, and I was really not big enough mm. to carry it. We were in a church. Mm. It was a lovely church, wasn't it? St Nicholas, yes. Mm. And Amalgamated with All Saints later on. Mm. And then we went there, we all went to Sunday school, that kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Until so that was before you went to Goring Road? Yes, but we still went to church there afterwards. Mm, so you had to come walk from Goring Road up, to, yes, up into it. town. And it's an odd thing, once we were 14 we needn't go to s Sunday school, isn't it odd? Yeah. Yes, well you, you've you been know, confirmed I suppose. Yeah. But once you go to work you please yourself. Mm, mm. Oh yes, yes. Well I suppose you've been confirmed by then, had you? Or? Well no, I've never been confirmed. Mm. I must have been mm. baptised, that mm. kind of. Mm. No, I've never been confirmed. Mm. When I was in Goring Road, 
had a paper round. Mm. Foster's in Northgate Street, a wholesaler. Mm. Two and ninepence a week, mm. um, uh, morning and evening, mm. an hour each, Saturday morning collecting mm. the money, two mm. and ninepence. Mm. I gave my mother two and six and had three. <laughs> No, no, no. I had a few tips as well, you see. Oh, yes, yes. And you did that, you know, not any composer. You didn't mm. say you've got to give it. You, you did it as part of the thing. You were, you were, you were earning your way, weren't you? Oh, yes, you, you had to. My Bob had a paper round too. And mm. He must have done the same, but I didn't mm. even ask him what he gave. Never did. No. So you, you had a bicycle then, I suppose? Only when I went... To, Go, oh, no, 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 because when I went to Parsons Heath, I had to go up the paper round. Mm. There wasn't time in the morning mm. to go there, deliver mm. the papers, come back for breakfast. Mm. No, no, I had to walk there. I didn't have a bicycle mm. until I was 14 mm. and went to work. So you were a paper round boy before you were age 13 then? When I was 13. Mm. When mm. I said, just when I was 13 and soon, or mm. oh, when I was 12, mm. you could be a paper at 12. When I was 12, I was a paper. I'm a bit forgetful now. Mm. I've got older. <laughs> oh, you're entitled to forget a few things, that's for sure. Yes, yes. So, um, that's a little bit of early life. Um, tell me about father then. You said he was in the army. What did he? Was he a regular army man or was he called well, up? No, no, he was called up. Mm. In 14? Everybody was called up. I think he was called up a bit later because he was married. I, I don't really know. We never went mm. into it, you see. What regiment was he in? There again, I don't know. No. I never even thought mm. to ask me. He's just there for a, a few years. That wasn't part of our life. Mm. It was his life before we knew him. Mm. Do you know where he served? In mm. France. Yeah. He's in the Royal Artillery. He's a horseman with the... Uh, Guns. Oh right, so yeah, and that's familiar with how, horses. Uh, you know, knowledge of horses got them jobs afterwards. You see. Mm. Mm. Well, that's, that was good. So Claude, uh, Claude Harold. Do you know when he was born? How, how old he was, when you were born, or do you know when he was born? No. I... Or where he came from. <laughs> that's a very long story. <laughs> a very long story. He had a very rough time. Yeah. Um, his, his father was, he used to work at the old playhouse at the corner of Priory Street. He's a bit of having a carpenter and that kind of thing. He worked in the old, it's gone now, years yeah. and years ago, they used to play house where the old National Garage was there. That's it, yes, yes. yes. Sir. And he worked there. Um, uh, that was Any, grandfather, that was yeah, your grandfather. My grandfather. Anyhow, he left my grandmother and five children mm. in Monks Ely. Mm. And they had to be brought back to Colchester by uh, a relation who found them accommodation and they were more or less... He was on the bread line there, and and the whole family. And that included your father, so your That's father. That's my father, and yeah. he used to tell us he used to go to the workhouse to get stale bread. Mm. You know, he was that kind of poor. Mm. So he started at the bottom really, mm. and mm. he had a hard time then. When when they came, they weren't in the workhouse, were they? They were. Oh no no no! Where were they living? They lived you know? in a house. She my. Grandmother was related to what was then Hills Builder. Mm. He's in a small way. And they had a house in Gilbert Road and he let her live there. Mm. And then they had to look after themselves. Mm. There are five, five children. Mm. Yes. So do you know what grandfather's name was? His first name? No. You, ne you never knew him, I presume? No, no of course not. Mm. No, no, no. You mean my father's father? Yes. Oh, he disappeared. Mm. He disappeared. In Monk's Ely, presumably. Yes. With, when my father was a child, you mm. see. Mm. Twenty years before my father mm. and mother mm. came along, you see. Mm. Mm. He just, whether it was another woman or, but, yeah. or a tired of having to support a family. Mm. Kind of a travelling 
man mm. couldn't get to the bottom of it really. But did you say your father or your grandfather worked at the playhouse? My grandfather. Mm. Do you know what he did there? Whether well, he's a carpenter or went on uh, uh, as a stage man. Mm. I don't Mate. really yeah. know. No, no. It was the thing we talked mm. about a lot mm. really. Did you know your grandmother, your father's mother? Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. She eventually... So she was a Hills? She would, yes, she was a Hill. I think she was a Hill. And she eventually finished up in the Severals. Mm. But every, some Sunday afternoons she used to come to our place mm. and sit in the, by the window, just sitting there eating thin bread and butter, saying nothing. Mm. You know, mm. her problems made her, m not mental, but... Yeah. Yeah. She disappeared. Yes, quite often happened. Yeah, do you know? Do you know her first name? Not really. You knew her as Granny Nanny. Or? We hardly knew her. Mm. We mm. hardly knew her. A because, stranger to. Yes. Well, when we were uh, children, she was in several. You see. Mm. Mm. That that had happened. So, what about your mother, Katie? Katie. Um, what um, What do you remember about her? Mother? Mm. Oh, she was my friend. Um, the, the trouble was that she was more fond of me than my father thought she should be. Mm. It came between mm. us here. Uh, before marriage, she's a domestic servant, mm. as most girls. Uh, her gr uh, my mother's mother had nine children. Mm. As soon as the children were 14, the girls went to domestic service mm. and probably the boys too, whatever they could. So she, your mum was one of nine children? One of nine children, yes. yes so she was in domestic service before she met your father? Oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, he met her when a friend of his used to visit the cook where she was. Mm. My father came with him, you know. Mm. And that's how it started. So where was she in service? In Lixton Road. I mm. don't know where. Mm. I, I, there was a parson mm. of some kind. Mm. And she always used to say the worst people to work for are parsons. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> yes. Tights on money, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. My mother's a very nice person. Mm. Very mm. nice. But mm. um, my father and I never really got on a lot. <laughs> Nothing really, mm. but... Um, so what did your father do after he left the army? Well, first, when he left the army, he got a job in Hancock's Sweet People. They were in St. Butter Street. He's driving the horse car. Then he got a job on the co-op, mm. you see, hardware sales. Mm. And once you're on the co-op, you're all right. Mm. Uh, you're fixed up. So he left the horses behind. I had a horse mm. there. He had a horse and cart, hardware cart, mm. living so powerful all around oh, the country. Yes, yes. So he'd travel around? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Quite a bit of Until they got motorised, mm. and then he was on a motor, you see, with that mm. kind of thing. Paraffin, soap, soap mm. powders, pails, that kind of part mm. of the cooperative movement, you know. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now you back to your schooling then. You say you were pretty good at all sorts of things. Were oh, you yes. sporty at all? Any um, any interest in sport? Oh yes, my I told you headmistress made me captain of the football team. Oh right. Because we always used to play football and cricket on the castle park mm. when we were children. Loved mm. it. All our holidays. Mm. Yes, used to play down the mm. on the bottom pitch in the castle mm. park. Mm. Used to go evenings in the summer. And during August, love cricket and football. Mm. Not mm. tennis, nothing else. Did you have much to do with your your younger brothers? Well, uh, well uh, all of your uh, brothers. Yes, Bob and I were more or less the same age, mm. but the others, were, they came along, but they couldn't play so much with mm. us. They were too young, really. Mm. So how did they all, all um, sort of end up? I mean, what did Bob do with his life? Oh. Bob went out to work when I went out to work, mm. you see, when he was 14. Mm. Mm. So what did he do? Uh, he, he first of all, had a job on, on the co-op as uh, on a baker's cart, mm. yes. And mm. then he went on, had to leave when he was 16,
to say, got rid of some of them at 16 and went to work for Tweeds, the baker, mm. and had a little horse and cart of his own mm. until he had a lorry, you see, mm. Mm. up to the wall. <coughs> so where were Tweeds and North, North Station no, Road? North Station mm. Road, yes, yes. That's it. I know, mm. I know, I know a lady who was a Tweed. Ah, yes. She, mm. uh, yes, mm. I'll think of it later. Mm. Um, um, so how, what about um, Fred? Mm. Frederick? Fred? Mm, what did he do? Uh, he came after me. Mm. What did he do in life? What? Ah, he, he worked at Wright's Transport. Mm. They used to be in Hyatt Key, Coal and Transport. Mm. Mm. Right, so he, was, he went into coal. How about Leslie? Uh, Les, uh, Les, Les and Ronnie were very, very lucky because they were the last two and uh, we three were supporting the family, you see. So they, they could go to the oh, um, accountants uh, who were in Elds Lane, I forget the name mm. of them now, uh, where they only got about five bob a week, but they could learn a job. Mm. Mm. So they could get a try. What was the fifth son's name? Uh, Ronnie, did you say? Ah, yes, Claude Ronald. You ah, can't, Ronnie. <laughs> you can't call him Claude I'm in not. school, not in an ordinary school. <laughs> now, mine was the most first job, hmm. most interesting. So what did you do when you left school? Uh, yeah. When I left school, it was 1931, there were hardly any jobs about. Hmm. And the only job I could get was with Mr. Markham the Hornbroker. Oh yes. Do you know that? In Priory Street. Yeah. In Priory Street, yes, mm. yes. Mm. Seven and sixpence a week, <laughs> um, from eight till seven, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, half day Thursday, mm. eight o'clock Friday, nine o'clock, seven and sixpence a week. Mm. And it's the most remarkable business, the pouring mm. bit. There are two sections, you see. There is the jewellery place where you go if mm. you're going to pawn a watch or anything. Mm. But then the other and more important is the side entrance, the pledge. Yes. And every Monday morning there's a huge, huge crowd at the pledge door. Mm. And I can still see in my mind the first two people who came every Monday morning. Mm. Anne Crouch and Doris Palmer. I can see them now, I've forgotten. Mm, mm. And what you see, do you know anything about it? I have a little, a little idea, but you tell me. Uh, every Monday morning, they used to come and pop their husband's suit mm. or best shoes, you see. Mm, mm. The rent man came <laughs> under. No, it's quite true. Mm, mm. Things you see know, on all Monday and Tuesday, you see, the place was crowded with these bundles mm. coming mm. in. Clothing it, mainly. Yes, clothing or worth really nothing, but it's a regular thing mm. and it got its interest every week. And we used to they used to put tickets on them and we used to take them up and put them in racks mm. of What food. would they get for a suit and a pair of shoes? Pound. A pound? About a pound. Pounds are generally for that they mm. got. They weren't worth it. They'd always had a pound. Mm. And every week they had a pound. Mm. Now, Friday and Saturday, was whenever the husband was paid, they used to come to redeem the pledge because the husband was going out drinking Friday. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, yeah. it's quite true. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so what did you give them back? They used to pay the money and another threepence or fourpence, mm. you know, the, the, so it's, yeah. the, to redeem the pledge. Yeah, yeah. You see? And, and then they, on Sunday they'd wear it and go to church, presumably? But Would they wear it on Sunday and go to church? or Not to go to church. No, no. They to go drinking? They, for Friday or Saturday went out, the men, to, for the men, these are the yeah. men's zoo, to go to the pub, you see. <laughs> Not to church. Church wasn't in it. No, no. So it was. They needed the suit and the shoes to go down to the pub. Yes, yes, yes. It, it need the need to be both. Some put the shoes in. Mm. Some put the suit in. You know, quarter mm. which was the most valuable, or it could have been a. But they were the majority of things. Mm. 
So the husbands knew that the wives were doing this, did they? I wouldn't realise. I just uh, possibly. <laughs> so, so long as the suit was there Friday um, when they wanted or Saturday, I don't know. Mm. I mean, so I was 14. Mm. I wouldn't know anything. Were you at the counter taking taking? No, 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 no. There were two men at the counter. Mm. I was the boy. There were two boys. We used to take them upstairs, mm. running up and down. <laughs> Mr. Markham was a counsellor mm. and he's one of the meanest men <laughs> I've ever known. Mm. When we were sleep, sweeping up at night, we used to take a magnet and go over the dust to pick up the pins that dropped. We said put pins through the cards onto the cloth. Mm. And we used to have to pick up the pins. Mm. And then a pack of pins is probably tuppence or three. Mm. Yes. So he'd sell those as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Sir. So what yeah. about the other side of the business? That wasn't what that was just Mondays you were doing that. So Mond what were you doing there the rest wasn't of the week? an awful lot. There were two men doing they sold a bit of clothing and mm. tents and that kind of thing. But mm. uh, me and the other boy were just concerned running I was only there for three months. Mm. You know, as soon as I could get out I got out and went to a chemist in High Street with Bevan and Stoke, next to where man's music plays. But I was only there for three months. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Ma uh, Bevan and Stokes. It was Bevan a and post Stoke. office too. Yeah. Oh, so it was like a... Next to Harper's used to be there. Uh, very near Stockwell Street. Mm -hmm. Two or three shops down there. So you stayed in the parish. You stayed in the parish of St Nicholas. Oh yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the only job I could get. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get out from Markham. Mm -hmm. And then after being there about three months, I got a job at the co-op mm -hmm. at East Gates. On the strength of your father being there? Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. So he helped you along I could have then. gone there before until my brother had left. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't have two boys of the same age in mm -hmm. the cup at that time. Mm. And then I started there as errand boy warehouseman. Mm. Unfortunately, the co-op had an education department, mm. and uh, you could, if you want, as I did. Do you remember the Technical College, top of North Hill? Mm. Yes, used to go to their evening classes: uh, arithmetic, English, typewriting, and shorthand. I mm. went there. Glad I did. Not the, not the. A short town, but the typewriting came in mm. handy when I was in the army. Mm. Odd place to be, mm. Yes. Mm. not a guy, a typewriter. Mm. Yes, but I was there, I was in the co op um, until um, I was called up. In 1939, presumably? No, no, I, no. I got an extension until mm. 1940 because all that time. I was doing educational work in the co-op, mm. first at the tech, and then they had uh, correspondence, Timmy Bobble. Mm. And I was doing that. I got a distinction and went to one of their colleges for mm. the week. So, uh, you know, I was well up in that kind mm. of thing. And um, uh, uh, I was in the concert, I was studying when my call-up papers came, and I got an extension mm. for six months and went, in 1940. <coughs> so what were you really doing with the co-op? You say Aaron Boy, what did that involve? Aaron Boy then up to shop assistant, mm. shop assistant... Uh, doing what? Selling what? Cheese uh, or...? Groceries, mm. everything, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, cheese, sugar, butter, everything mm. they'd got, yes, yes. Mm. And actually, um, the day bro war broke out, <laughs> that's the thing, who comic says that, doesn't he? Mm. The day war broke out, I was stock taking in Roseby Road in Clacton. Mm. You know, it's drafted there, that mm. particular. You could go anywhere. I was in Claudius Road, shop, one or two shops. Mm. You could be sent, you know, where you... On the were. train or... But on the train you go? On the train and mm. you paid your own fare. Really? But, yes. For one week I tried cycling. Cheaper, but it was too much, 16 mm. miles night and morning, mm. and in the Clacton in the season you worked late. Mm. So I had to, you know, spend my money on the train. Mm. 
Then I was in the army for six years. So you were called up in 1940? In 1940. And what about basic training? Where did you go for that? Basic training? Didn't you have any basic training? Well, I did have the two or three months, you see. But mm. that was very, very little. It's all nothing. We were, we were moved about so much. We moved from place to Caister, um, to various other places. We moved up to Scotland. Where did you start though? Was it at Caister? In Caister. Yeah. Caister on sea, yes. Mm. Then we moved up to Scotland. It was terrible there. Mm. Then back to Portsmouth, to waiting to be placed. And we were mm. placed with a unit in Red Hill in, um, in Surrey. Surrey. So what regiment did they put you in? Pioneer Corps. I was. Mm. I was Clark Second, you see. A2 in sale. But I was graded A1 later on, you mm. see. Mm. And um, then after about a year, I got in with the quartermaster department in the unit to which I was attached. Mm. And then we moved up to Willsmow and the unit to, from which we were attached moved overseas mm. and we went down into Birmingham, a big holding centre, terrific place, so absolutely awful. It was a big housing estate mm. and all the houses were in a terrible state. The soldiers had taken the doors off mm. and the banisters off the firewood for the fires. Mm. Mm. But I wasn't there for a very long. Soon after I there, I was collared and they put me in the posting department, clerical work. Mm. They, they don't put me drilling or soldiering, you see. Mm. And I was in the posting department mm. and I was able to post decent places, my colleagues. Mm. And you can't believe this. Mm. Eventually, after about a couple of months, I posted myself. <laughs> I did. I posted myself to a job mm. as Russian corporal. Mm. It was a prisoner war camp in Hentland. In where? Hentland. Wales, Wales. Oh, Wales. right, yes, oh, yes, yes. Next to my wife's home in Landisley. Ah, and there it's, lies a story. Yes, indeed. But you can't understand. You think somebody in the war office is sending soldiers about. Mm -hmm. Chaps like myself, little private then. I was Lance Corporal uh, mm -hmm. where I was before, mm -hmm. but Lance Corporal's dropped down when they go to holding us. And mm -hmm. I got myself back to Lance Corporal, you see, and um, uh, back into. Hentland. And you posted yourself there? I posted myself and some other, yes of course. Oh, were you With allowed to do that? other people, pardon? Were you allowed to do that? Well I did. I made out the draw. You see, I'm, <laughs> when my, fr you won't believe, when my friends went, well, I made out the draw, put their names well, on it, you well, see. Well, the only people who would do it, the sergeants there were temporary sergeants, and a lot of them weren't probably really literate, you know. Mm. They couldn't do forms and... So they didn't see what was going on then? Well, they saw what was going on, all right. People have got to be moved out. Mm. I said, well, I, I want to get out of here. Yeah. I said, can I post myself here? And they said, yes. Oh, well, that's all right then. So yes. you, it was all above board then? It was all about board. <laughs> it just oh, sounds yes, an odd thing to do, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and then I was in... Wales and got armed corporal sergeant mm. and um, so this was a prisoner of war camp. Prison war. I was really the quartermaster. Mm. There were regimental quartermasters came and went. Mm. Two or three of them I used to do. I, I'm good at that kind of thing. Mm. I'm not a soldier. So you were looking after soldiers or the prisoners? The both. I fed and clothed fifteen hundred people. Mm. You know, their clothing, their equipment, their furniture, their food. Mm. Everything mm. comes under the quartermaster. So how many soldiers were there and how many prisoners? Ah, there were about a hundred soldiers who were the guards mm. and there were about fifteen hundred prisoners. Mm. 
And where did the prisoners come from? From all over? Italy, they were Italy. They were they all Italians. Uh, eventually, a lot of them went out onto farms, staying mm. onto farms. Mm. When you say eventually, what, towards the end of the war? or? or? Yes, towards the end. And mm. they became what they knew as cooperators. Mm. And on their uniform was their big patch show and show they were cooperators. Mm. And mm. then at the end, the end of the war, the adjutant, who was my boss, was a good friend of mine, you know. Mm. I, I worked for him, you know. Mm. What was his name? Uh, Major Man. Mm. Major Man. Uh, well, well, I won't say friends. Mm. Not friends, really, but so happy with him. Very nice chap. Mm. He was and an officer and you were He wanted other me to be posted, instead of leaving them, be posted as a regimental quartermaster sergeant, but with a view to getting a commission. Mm. There are two things that stopped my mm. doing that. One, after having a commission and leaving the army, what could I do? The other thing was, and this is disgusting, <laughs> if ever they wanted me to take any kind of a parade, I couldn't do it. Mm. I was, I'd, I'd hardly been on a drill for five years, mm. you see. I, I, I assume a headquarters man. Mm. Mm. You see? Well, you didn't need to do it, presumably. No, no, mm. well, no, I, I was busy all the time. So, no square bashing for you then? Yes, and uh, there I met my wife. I met my wife, which is. Um, what was her you, name? Uh, uh, Margaret Davis. What? Margaret Jane Davis. She was Palmer's daughter. Was she a, a V I S or a V I E S? I ah, yes. Oh, she's a baby. Ah, yes, you know, I, I couldn't make out what you were saying. Because we have a Davis here as well. Ah, are you Welsh? A little I don't bit. Oh, maybe. Oh, <laughs> we don't. Oh, we have Theresa in the room. <laughs> and that's, you see, being on headquarters staff, we were always on the phone. You see, mm. and when we, and also instead of doing guard duty, we did, did night duty on the telephone. You mm. see. And we got to know the operators quite well, mm. you know. And she and was an operator? No, she wasn't. Mm. No, no, no. We got to know them quite well. And when we were on the night, we used to chat to, not chatting them mm. up, talking to them at the time. And uh, I got to know Iris. Now, Iris, a very pretty girl. Mm. And I met her once, you see. And well, I walk with her, but she's very, very pretty, but not quite myself. But and then she introduced me to Mag, mm. who has on fire, mm. Mm. you know. Is like, I'm not easy with girls, mm. you know. I'm, Nor am I. No, 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 no. But my brothers were, they were all, I, I wasn't, mm. you know, I couldn't chat them up or do mm. that kind of thing. But... Um, not on my so you, you must have had something, a glint in your eye. It's not that I could talk to her. I could talk and she could talk sensibly to me. You, <laughs> you, it's a big thing. Don't have to chat them up as so long mm. as you can find a level way mm. to... A common and, ground, yes. And you feel happy with mm. them. Is this North or South Wales? Um, West Wales, mm. Cardiganshire. So, Welsh speakers, presumably. Oh, she was Welsh speaking. Mm. Her mother uh, didn't want to, to marry me because I was English and she was Welsh. Mm. They were very Welsh there. Her father was much older and he was dead. Mm. 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 So, where did you meet then, or where did you used to meet? Outside the, the camp gates, or to the pub, or to mm. dances? or? No, Lendisha, where she lived, was five miles away. Mm. And I, first of all, I used to walk there and back for an evening and go for a walk. Mm. Mm. Eventually, I borrowed a, a bike from the war ag. They used to take the prisoners out. Mm. And I used to cycle down. There mm. was a train down at 6.30, there was no train back, mm. so it's not much, mm. sometimes a train down and walk, but on the Sunday I had to walk down and walk back. Mm. 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 So when was this, 1944, 5? 
Uh, no, 42. It's probably about 40, end of 43 when mm. I met her, you see. Mm. Mm. See, that wasn't at the be beginning, you know, mm. end of 43 or 44. Mm. And then we were with it a long time until I was demobbed. Mm. And when and did you decide to marry? Of course, yes, 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 yes. When? As soon, soon after we came out. After you were demobbed? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, I came at 46, we married in 47. Mm. Oh, her uncle had a business in London and he was very ill in a hospital. So she had to stay up there mm. for some time to look after the shop until he came out. Mm. And I used to go up to London Saturday night uh, to mm. uh, that mm. kind of thing. So he married in 1947. Mm. So what, did, what was Margaret doing then? She, what was her job? She had no job. Mm. Uh, she was she was a land in the land army, mm. and then when her father died, it was a big shock to her, and she was quite ill for some time. Mm. But when I met her, she was kind of working as a reception of the dentist. Mm. You know, just a small mm. job. Mm. Yeah. So what did her father do? What was the background of the Davies? Uh, he was a retired farmer, you know. They, they had money, you mm. see. Not a lot, but mm. there was no need for her to work, really. Mm. So what happened to the land if he was a farmer? He let the, the little, the small holding out. Mm. Tan Coyard, we know the farmer, we eventually sold it. Mm. Or she sold it, she and the mother, because mm. It mm. would belong to them jointly. Mm. So in 1946 war was over, were you still looking after the, the prisoners because they didn't release them straight away? Oh yes, 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 yes. Mm. The, most they were going then. It was getting quite slack, you mm. know. And then... And some stayed presumably, did they? So did any of the prisoners marry local girls? No. Oh, <laughs> married local girls. A lot of them were caught, or several were caught martialed. Mm. Because they became daddies to local oh. girls. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, so yes, some, yes. some Italian the, children. Then. Yes, indeed. Yes. yes, they are very affectionate. <laughs> very affectionate, yes. Well, they're renowned for it, aren't they? And the then Italian. I was back in civilian life. Mm. Oh, I, I, then I, I got another scholarship to co-op college at Stanford Hall for three months. And I was still when I came out doing correspondence mm. courses with uh, the co-op and... Mm. So, uh, you got married, where yes. did you live? Where did you get married? Ah, we got married in registry office. I'm an agnostic mm. and uh, Mag's mother didn't want to know anything about it. She got married uh, on top of North Hill. In Colchester? In Colchester, yeah. yes. yes. Mm. But eventually, when Sean was born, we came down and I couldn't do any wrong mm. with her, you know, mm. she was good. She came, well, as a matter of fact, we built a room on for her and her sister to live with us when they got old, you know, so... So where was this? In, in um... So you were married in Colchester? Married in Colchester. And then where did, where did you live? Oh, we lived for about six months with my brother, had house in... Ross Road, he'd got a room, but Mac couldn't stand his sister, and we bought, uh, I was working in Kelvin, and the co-op mm. shop in mm. Kelvin was first assistant, and um, um, she, we bought a little house in the main street, mm. 600 pounds, the little mm. house, yeah, two up and two, down quite, but, and Sean was born there. What, what number was the house in, in the High Street? Yes, Evelyn Cottage. Mm. There's a row of them, one or two Evelyn Cottage. Mm. I forget the number, but it's Evelyn Cottage mm. in Kelly. I was working there. And soon after that, I was made the branch manager at Row Hedge, mm. went there. And so we moved to Kendra Road, mm. sold that house and bought. And then I was branch manager at Wivenhoe, mm, mm. and then we went further afield. Mm. I um, got a job as assistant grocery manager with a co-op 
grocery department and went there as assistant grocery manager buyer in charge of the whole lot. Where was this? In Carmarthen. And oh, right. Ne it's next door to my wife's home. Mm. It's where we used to go for our recreation. Mm. So mm. I knew it well, you see. Mm. So it's quite a quite a, a wrench though, I suppose. But Sean was young and she Sean was six. Mm. Sean was six so she she went to the convent school in Prairie. She had lovely uniform. And she looked so pretty in it. And mm. then she, we went there. We, first of all, we stayed with Mungi, that is my wife's mother. And then we got a house a couple of miles away. Mm. And um, it was a terrible place, really. They got themselves into some awful muddle, you see. And they thought, uh, and they got everything mixed up with their accounts in the grocery department mm. and they and anyhow it was my job to get mm. and I sorted them sorted out. Sorted it all out, yes. But when I sorted it or I'm out, I found that uh, some of them were helping themselves. <laughs> Truly, yes. As she probably suspected. Yes. And I had to they did think the general manager who was my boss was helping himself, but he was a funny little man. Mm. But I was actually in charge, he was nothing. I was in charge of the whole department, mm. all the shops, the vans, and all. I was able to so sort out. I'm good at sums and figures, mm. you mm. know, and got that sorted out. Mm. But after six years, the CRS took us over because we couldn't pay the dividends. Mm. So what COS? The Cooperative Retail Society. Mm. They are national. Mm. And when a society failing, they take them over. Mm. And then when they took them over, you see, there would be no position for me. They've got a grocery manager. Mm. Mm. They didn't want me. But the secretary, or the secretary, or one who had been there with me, he'd moved about nine months ago, you see. Mm. And he'd gone up to an agriculture firm, Winstay Farmers, Lance Bryant. And he came down one Saturday, about a month before the end, and he said, there's a job going at our place as transport manager, he said. He said, you could do that. So I said, so I said could I? I said, yes, you could do mm. that. Applied for it, got it, nothing about it. So when was this? What year would this have been? I said, oh, wait a minute. We went, Sean was six, so Sean was 45, uh, 55, 55, 61. Mm. 61, then it must have been four. Sean was six when we left Colchester. Mm. That would be, she was born in 49, so that would be 55. I said, for six years in Carmarthen, that would make it 61. Mm. And I went on to um, Winstay Farmers, mm. Agricasus Transport Manager. Mm. Now, nothing about transport generally, although I had some lorries when I was in the army, but I mm. knew nothing about the agriculture. But it was organisational skills they wanted from you. Oh, yes, I'm an organised sums, you see. Mm. Yes, I was an organiser. Mm. Like, I had a fleet of mechanics who were good, mm. so I didn't have to touch a nut and bolt, mm. for which I'm hopeless. <laughs> no, 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 really. Yeah. I know what I can't do, mm. but I'm good at figures and at organisation. Well, that's, that's the know, main thing. We can't all be good at all things, can no, we? I'm not much of a gardener's wife, you <laughs> to tell me. Yeah. And I was there till I retired. But right. surprising. So when retired at 65? At 65, yeah. And I didn't lose a day's unemployment in my life. Really? No, I didn't. No, no illness? I had two hernias. Mm. One at Coach, sister, one at mm. But, you know, that's all. No mm. illness to be away sick. Mm. Not in that time, mm. no, no. Mm. Had colds, you see, mm. but you work with them. Mm. Well, yeah, this is it. So, um, 1982, presumably, you I retired. retired, yes. 
and, and then we walked and walked and walked. Mm. We were big walkers. Mm. We used to walk up to 10 miles a day, mm. up to the time I was almost 80, until my back stuck in trouble. Mm. Mm. So how old are you now? Uh, 1991 in October. 91 in October, mm. my goodness. So that was good going then, yes. Indeed, yes. So sir. when did you come back to Colchester then? So there you, uh, there you are in one. ten years ago, mm. Meg had been ill for some on and off thyroid. Well, mm. She on a lot of pills and she thought, well, it would be very difficult for her to go 200 miles to visit her. Mm. So she uh, said, uh, she bought this little bungalow here and she said, I bought it, if you can come, you can have it. Mm -hmm. So we sold the cottage and came here. Mm -hmm. I liked the cottage. Mm -hmm. I liked where we lived. Mm -hmm. We lived up a lane, you see. Mm -hmm. We weren't opposite houses. We'd see the hills, mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. farm down below. So what could you see from the window from, from your house? From our house in, uh, in Trevor, the new house, mm -hmm. the fields and the hills, Farm down below, yeah. no houses opposite. So We're up a little lane. So you're quite high up, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. What was the weather like? Oh, good. <clears throat> Actually, we lived on Office Dyke. Mm. Do you know Office Dyke? Yes, that's, that's yes. Divide, so on the English border then? Yes, that's right. So every morning when I went to work, I went from England to Wales, and lunchtime mm. I came. So whereabouts on Office Dyke, north or south? Whereabouts were you? Near Oswestry. Street. I can yeah. never get north in, and south. In the middle, isn't it, Oswestry? Street? Yes. Yeah. I can't get north and south. Mm. I can never really be sure whether our house faced north, <laughs> south, east, or <laughs> beyond me. Mm. Mm. Yes. But um, uh, and then we had a good time. Magazine in the garden, love. She loved the garden. Mm. But mm. then we used to go walking. But I hurt my back. I tried lifting a very heavy gate pillar on my back mm. went. Mm. And that was the beginning of my trouble. Let, let put an end to put an end to that. Yes, it's not the legs that's a trouble, I can't mm. walk, it's my back. Mm. And when I went, when I went into a hot if I went into hot, my legs just collapsed. Mm. Mm. And I was in hospital there mm. and in a wheelchair for a couple of years until I made myself walk, mm. but a bit late. I can't walk much as I can, but mm. I do what I can. Mm. Mm. So, you a bit of a wrench you came to Fordham? Yeah, yes, it is, yeah. To, and but to be it's closer. got to be, Mag was, uh, she's on an awful lot of pills mm. there. And uh, she got a bit better, and they kept giving her more pills, but then one chap suddenly, he took her off a lot of those pills. Mm. And it was only the end of last year that we even thought that there was a heart problem. Mm. Never thought of it, you see. Mm. And she went into, she had the first out there, uh, New Year's night. Mm. Uh, was in hospital for a couple of months, came out for a month. Went in one day and died that night mm. in hospital so quick, you see. And we never mm. even thought of it. I didn't, no, didn't see it coming. No, the other problem, mm. she's on these steroids on large and large doses. Mm. But mm. there you are, that was how. Oh well, there we are, and we're back in Fordham. We're back in Fordham. So, so look, times recently, but. Um, every time I look mm. out of my window, Houses in front of me, mm, mm. and I'm not used to it mm. really. It's not, so not like in Wales, yes. Mm. So you started in Colchester, and, and uh, here you are. Here you are again. One thing I haven't asked you about. Now there's a couple of matters here. We touched on medical matters. Sulfur tablets and the doctors' club. Oh, when you were a boy. Do you know about sulfur tablets? No, 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 not at all. I should think they're pretty smelly, though, aren't they? My mother. Two things, yes, sulfur tablets and camphor blocks. They were her favourites, were they? Yes. Cure all for everything. In the summer, in the summer, uh, she used to make us take these sulfur tablets to cool our blood. 
and they used to be lemon and strawberry flavor, and they were the most horrible things you could mm. ever think of, you see. Why, did, why would you want to cool your blood? I didn't. <laughs> so that was the medicine, yeah. And in the winter, we had to wear these camphor blocks. They're about square like this, mm. and they were in a muslin bag, and they were pinned to your vest. Mm. <laughs> and do you know, from that day on, I can never wear a cravat. Mm. I, I would like to have a cravat, you know, instead of I, I can't bear it. Yeah, because yeah. it itches and irritates and yeah. reminds you. Mm. Another thing, another only problem with my father. He didn't like my studying. I, I used to, you know, do my homework mm. in the main room, you see, mm. you know, all the time, and most even, there'd be the radio on, you see, and all the others there. And we said, you don't want to do this, you're stunting your brain. So, you can see before you a stunted brain. <laughs> that was a big problem with my mother and him, really. Mm. But she wanted me to do it to get on, and she thought I was stunned. Well, there you are. You can see the result. A stunted brain. Well, that's just silly talk, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's just we silly were talk. Never. I never really got on with it. I don't know why. Mm. Probably because I was too close with my mum. Yes, that's right. It's a bit you, of jealousy, probably. You, you know, no, no. Not that she was at all demonstrative. Mm. Not so demonstrative. Mm. And the odd thing is, you see, when we used to go out to work, we used to decide how much of our money we gave our mother. Mm. There's no kind of tariff, nothing. Mm. You just decided how much, and that. Don't know how much my brother gave, mm. but we all, did. you know, it's part of the thing. You all in it, you see. Mm. We were. But when we were made and received, comparatively poor, with mm. five... So mother, mother needed the money. Yeah, yeah. And needed the money, you see. And it's only when two or three of us were out to work, we were comparatively well off. Mm. You know, three of us, or mm. eventually five of us, uh, mm. bringing in money every week. Did Dad like a drink? Did Dad ever go to the oh, pub? Oh, no. no he so didn't. he was around the house all the time as Ooh, well? He didn't drink, he was teetotal. Mm. In much Why teetotal? Pardon? Why teetotal? You say he wasn't religious, he wasn't a temperance man. Was no, he? I think he realised what drink did to mm. ordinary working people who went mm. out every Friday night and mm. spent half of the wages on beer. Mm. And the mm. family suffered, you see. You could see, you know, see, see mm. that. Mm. So, you, what was this doctor's club that I've got a note here about? Uh, Dr. Ben Susan. The doctor's club man used to come twice a week, mm. uh, and that was when we were in Maidenby Street. Like an but, insurance? Yes. I don't know what happened when we were in Goring Road. Mm. Tell me about Goring Road as well. What, what memories of Goring Road? Well, there's a council road. Um, I, I didn't like it, you, you, you know, mm. uh, but th there we are. I was working. You mm. see, so in in the evening, for most of the time I was there, uh, I, I was studying. Mm, studying and getting on. I didn't. I would. I would only go to the cinema once a week, type of thing. But you were quite sporty. You didn't go out and play football in the street. Uh, in the street, no. There's a recreation ground behind mm. us. But up to the time I was about eighteen years. But when you get about from eighteen on, but you don't go and play football with the youngsters, mm. you know. Mm. And then from 18 onwards, I was studying quite a lot, mm. really, mm. In, in the winter. Mm. Um, and I had girlfriends. I never got on with them. But my brothers did. Bob did. <laughs> Fred did. Uh, so you were interested enough, but it was just... They didn't... Uh, well, I don't know. There was an intellectual it's... level problem. No, no, <laughs> you know. Oh, no, I've always read a lot. Mm. Coaches to public library was marvellous then, mm. absolutely. Where was that? That was in... In uh, Stockwood Street, Stock where the police station was. Oh, yes. Uh, West Stockwood Street, yes. just below. There was everything mm. there. All the books I wanted 
what I call mm. the, the class. That building's still there, isn't yeah. it? It's part of the town I hall. Would, I would read in the paper that Bernard Shaw or Priestley said something, and I tried to get their books, mm. you know, mm. to find out, you know, mm. or Oscar Wilde or Huxley or people mm. like that. Mm. And gradually I built up mm. quite, you know, mm. a, a bit mm. about the. I read an awful lot, even poetry, plays, mm. that kind of thing, and mm. I've read all my life. Mm. And still do, probably. Oh yes, I can't bear television, or most of it. Mm. Uh, very little would interest me in the mm. evening. I'm, I'm very oh, difficult, I'm sorry. Mm. No, no, well that's... that's... I've, I've read an awful mm. lot, you mm. know. That's an interesting story, and... Uh... Mm. Mm. Thank you but for uh, thank you for you think, telling us. Yes, it's a pleasure. When you think of the pawnbroker, think of all those poor people mm. every Monday morning to be mm. able to get the rent money because the rent collector mm. would have to come at the beginning of the week, mm. else there wouldn't be any of that.